Hey, Big T's back out. Why? What do we got going on? I need to test the card for somebody, and I want to make sure this works. Still, it's better. Didn't put it on there. Oh my god, this mouse is just getting me. The ball is very dirty, so if you don't wash your balls, gentlemen, you're gonna get chafing. Let me get Mona to give this a quick well, pop. There's got the kitchen towel when we dry our dishes on. <laughs> Put some rubbing alcohol on here. This is just a scuzz towel that I wipe dirty crap with. So I look for the cleanest corner, and then the cleanest corner eventually will become dark. And then I throw this in the wash and grab another one out of the secret drawer for the kitchen towels. All right, so here we go. Balls are clean. Rollers. Hey, look at that. Look at that. When you don't have sticky balls, your stuff works. What are we doing? Why is this working? How did this fix? power supply has been recapped and I also had to spend several hundred dollars and get a replacement Super DMAC. That cured all the weird bugginess that I was having with pixels and lockups and making the disc not readable and all those crazy problems. So keep that in mind. This it's functional. Why are we doing this? Boom! This is a Picasso 4. Pimp Daddy of the Pimp Daddy of Amiga video cards. And apparently, this doesn't work. So I'm going to test it. Okay, so as I just wolf down a piece of Papa John's pizza, I'm going to slide this cover off where you can see my innards. Here's the graphic slot. I'm going to remove this card slot, screw, and slot. Now please keep in mind that this Amiga 3000 has that mod where they cut that uh, extra little case part out for the video toaster. Now this is a full length Zorro 3 and graphics card slot so it is going to suck up the entire thing. Supposedly uh. this card does all video. Okay, So here is the Picasso 4. Now if this works it'll just work apparently. Got a low high and got a video signal. This is supposed to take all the video and do some magic with it and shoot it out. And voila, the Picasso works. Yay! So now I need to test it in an Amiga 4000 because, in case you haven't figured it out, this is Mr. Q's Picasso 4. Now that we know it's functional, that means there is a bus arbitration problem or something on the riser card of the 4000 that I just restored for him. I did test it with a flicker fixer based card, this one, and it worked, but it wasn't a full size card. Now Kevin said when he inserted that card, it kind of pulled up on the daughter board a little bit. Maybe it wasn't making full contact. I have another daughter card, if that works. I will ship this card back with that daughter card. Kevin can then send me the one with the issue and then I will take a look at it. This is of course just NTSC high res, um, 640 by what the heck ever. I'm going to install Picasso 96 on this machine and see what it does in the higher RTG modes. Thank you for purchasing P96. Proceed, first install, intermediate, for real. Proceed, proceed, nope, Picasso 4 is automatically selected as you can see on the screen, I hope. So, with that done, we're going to reboot the machine. So now my screen is better, okay? We're going to go into System, Prefs, uh, Picasso 96 mode. And what we're going to do is, oh, Picasso 4 is already selected, 800 by 600. Wow, it did it all by itself. Screen mode. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we're going to choose a Picasso mode. Wow, there is a lot of them. 800 by 600, 24 bit. We're going balls to the wall. We're going to say use. And there we go. Magic Workbench colors will be screwed up. 800 by 600, 24 bit, BGR. We can even go higher 
Now, a benefit of an RTG card is up here you get your full 2 megs of chip RAM back, or your full meg of chip RAM if you're on a smaller system. High res lace. Save. Much better. Takes a second for this thing to kick in. There we go. And if I reboot now, it reboots so fast. There we go. So the reason I set this back is because when I remove this card and go back to my original 3000s configuration, I don't want it to screw my own stuff stuff up. Pulling this monstrosity out is quite the ordeal and I'm being extremely careful. Sitting it on its anti-static bag. Uninstall the Picasso 4. I'm gonna have to run this again on my 4000 if I break my 4000. All right, so it's done and done. Removals are quick. This machine's actually running very well. There we go, no errors, no problems. I'm back to where I was before we started. Now, I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna put this uh, side panel back on and the front fascia plate back in service and put the 68 pound beast down below. Someone told me these are thumb screws. They're actually not, these are washers that spin. I just don't man tighten them. I just tighten them, you know? Because like every Amiga, you're in and out of it. Not fall out loose, but you don't need to put extra stress on the screw threads. It ain't going anywhere. And you know you're gonna be back in here in three days. Serial number 442. Back in service with its feet. That's part one of this adventure. Let me take apart my 4000 and we're going to repeat this process with Amiga 4439. I'm going to set my machine back to NTSC regular high res. I'm going to remove my GVP card here. Jen's conveniently left you a dill pickle finger so you can put that in there too. Okay, so here's my Amiga 4000. Yeah, look at that. It takes the whole thing up. I had to take some of my fast RAM out because I have a 90 degree socket and nothing. Nothing! Let's double check compatibility here on craziness boot. I'm gonna verify it's effed up by plugging in the RGB so we see the screen in RGB. We do not see it here. Why is the Picasso 4 not working on the Amiga 4000 but works on the 3000. So I don't even get a signal anymore. And that's interesting. Is there a jumper I have to select? Can't be that my video card slot is messed up. Cards back in. I found it 400 times easier if you just take the slot cover out. It goes right in, no problem. Expansion port diagnostic. It is in there. Now, leaving it on the screen, I'm going to move this connector up to VGA. Okay. So, after a couple hours, I'm on the phone with Kev for an hour, found some things out. This Amiga 4000 has 3.2 ROMs in it. And, not 3.2.1, 3.2. So, I tried 3.2.1. No dice. Nothing. If I plug it into the RGB, I can see the board. It's a 4 mig card. So I put 3, 1 ROMs in it. Work fine. Works fine in here. Hole 9. Put 3, 1, 4 ROMs in. And, now it'll be weird for a second, because it's going to say I can't find the Ethernet card. Then I click retry, and it'll take a second. It'll flip. I will get an error about my card spectrum settings and it might turn it a little blue nothing to worry about it is just the card itself if i double mouse button and show the expansion boards it works fine and it's a great color gray screen like normal like that it will freak out and i can screen mode it and it'll be fine i have some weird dh0 things because i'm trying to run i'm in 256 let's, let's turn the colors down a little bit that's even bluer. So it's just because I have a weird spectrum thing going on. And there we go. So my background's a little blue because I have a spectrum card, but I haven't said any of this stuff. It's just kind of thrown together to see if this Picasso 4 works. So the Picasso 4 works. I'm gonna ship this back to Kevin. I'm also gonna burn him a 314 ROMs. He has the software. 
and the ROMs were used in another machine. I think they're over there. But anyway, I'm going to give them some new ROMs that are compatible with the Picasso 4. So important safety tip, if you have a Picasso 4, not a lot of people do, and you're trying to run 3.2 or 3.2.1 and you're wondering why your RTG card just says no, 3.1, 3.1.4 ROMs works fine. You can do the modules disk and 3.2 yourself and back get yourself back up through software. I don't want to mess with this too much because A, it's working, and B, I don't want to obliterate my own setup for my GVP card. So that's all I got for this weird scenario tip tech quick weird update. So thank you guys for watching. As always, I hope you learned something.